Okay, I'm recording this video to talk about our paper on this year's MSMO. It is called a qualitative study of the dynamic behavior of adaptive gradient algorithms. It is a joint work of me with Lei Wu and Professor Wiener. So in this paper, we, uh, we discuss adaptive gradient methods and uh, its uh, dynamical behaviors. Adaptive gradient methods, uh, as we all know, it is the class of uh, optimization algorithms uh, that Adaptive, adaptively uh, tunes the learning rate element, element wisely for, uh, for the gradient. So here we give the um, iteration scheme of two typical adaptive gradient methods. One is IMS prop and the other is ADAM. So if we look at the iteration scheme of IMS prop, we see that uh, compared with vanilla stochastic gradient descent, we divide a vector, uh, here is the square root of Vt plus epsilon to the gradient here. This division is made elements wisely. And this Vt is actually as exponential uh, average of the gradient square. So in this way, we are, um, we are tuning the, the step size for each direction, uh, considering the, the, the gradient magnitude along this direction in the uh, previous, uh, in the history. And the dam compared to IMS prop it as a momentum term MT here. So it's like a momentum version of IMS prop, but of course uh, there are some slight differences. And um, adaptive gradient methods usually performs better than uh, vanilla SGD in the sense that the convergence is much faster. But at the same time, the behavior of the loss curve is also, um, also more complicated. Here we can see on this figure on the, uh, bottom left uh, part, we can see a loss curve of, um, of a neural network trained by IMS prop. And uh, we can observe three typical behaviors of this loss curve. The first is a fast initial convergence. We can see that the convergence at first is very fast. The loss decrease is very fast. But this fast initial convergence doesn't last very long. It um, ends in a very short period of time. And it's followed by uh, a regime with small oscillations. And also occasionally there are some large spikes that drives the iterator back to somewhere uh, the, the loss is very big. Um, in this paper, we aim to uh, study these three typical behaviors of the uh, loss curve. Okay, we start from the first fast initial convergence and we try to explain this phenomenon from the perspective of, of a sign GD. And of course, we start from considering continuous limit of the, um, of the algorithm, but uh, different from SGD. For SGD, we only have one hyperparameter that is the uh, one important hyperparameter when we do continuous limit, that is the learning rate, right? We, ju we just push the learning rate to zero, then uh, we get a continuous limit. But here it's more complicated. We have, uh, except the learning rate eta, we have more uh, two other hyperparameters, alpha and beta. They are momentum factors for the first order momentum on the numerator and the second order momentum on the denominator. And so there are more. Uh, there is more than one uh, way to um, to to do the continuous limits. One way is to keep uh, keep alpha and beta to be fixed. And just to push it to it tends to zero. Um, then the continuous limit looks like this on the left side, and this is something very uh, similar to a continuous version of the sine GD, especially when epsilon equals to zero. When epsilon is zero, it is exactly a continuous sine GD, and which means the direction of the update is just the sine of the gradient vector. But if we do differently, if we consider we if we let alpha and beta goes to one as eta goes to zero with this linear relation. So alpha equals to one minus a eta and beta equals to one minus b eta. This keeps the, uh, the speed or the time scale of the three um, equations consistent. Then we get a system of three ODEs, one for v, uh, the second order moment, and one for m, the first order moment, and finally one for x, the iterator. Okay. And uh, to, uh, exp to provide explanation for the fast initial convergence, we consider the left-hand side, the continuous limit uh, to, the S, uh, to the sine GD. And we provide the following theorem for sine GD. We show that if we use sine GD to optimize a strongly convex objective function, um, then it will converge to global minimum in finite time. 
since it's converging finite time, of course, in, in some stage of the train of the optimization, the convergence must be super linear. So um, considering that in many cases, the trajectory of the, the Adam or MS prop is close to the sine GD. So uh, this can provide partial explanations to the fast initial convergence of these algorithms. Okay, and the second thing we, uh, we study is the small oscillation. And um, the small oscillation is a phenomenon that uh, the iterator, instead of converging directly to the global minimum, it moves around, oscillates around the global minimum. And this um, phenomenon is uh, especially obvious for uh, simple examples. For example, here we optimize the simple 1D uh, objective function f equals to a half times x squared using IMS prop. We see that instead of uh, converging to the global minimum zero, um, the iterator of IMS prop always finally oscillates between two points. One is the uh, eta over two and one is minus eta over two. And this is quite different from the uh, from the gradient descent, since uh, here we consider don't consider stochastic methods, we consider full batch training for gradient descent. As long as the uh, the learning rate is not quite big, it will definitely uh, co converge to the global minimum instead of oscillating. Um, and this uh, phenomenon can be explained by a linearization around the, the stationary point. And the explanation is just. Uh, the stationary point uh, for for the uh, adaptive gradient methods, uh, considering not only the iterate x but also other variables like v and m, it is uh, it is unstable for these dynamics. So uh, on the bottom part, we start from considering the uh, we consider ms prop and consider its continuous version. Uh, note that this is the continuous version here in the previous page on the right. So we consider the uh, momentum factor go to one as uh, eta goes to zero. And the continuous uh, dynamics is this system of ODE. And now we consider if we have a stationary point x star zero. Note here, here the v part is zero because well, at this stationary point, the gradient is zero. And that means um, the accumulation of the gradient square is also zero. So at this point, uh, we linearize this dynamics, we get the following linear dynamics. And the dynamics uh, matrix is the Jacobian on the right side. And we see that the, uh, the upper left block of this matrix has epsilon on this denominator, that mean, that, which means when epsilon is quite small, this block will be quite big. And that means, well, uh, the dynamics will be unstable. Uh, at this, uh, around this stationary point. So of course, instead of converging to the stationary point, it will move around and oscillate around the stationary point here. And finally, uh, we come to study the influence of hyperparameters for them. This is quite important because for them, we have three hyperparameters to tune. In, uh, besides the learning rate eta, we have alpha and beta. And different combinations of alpha and beta will give uh, very different uh, behaviors of the loss curve. And here we uh, we can still consider the continuous limit. So instead of considering alpha and beta, we can study a and b, because a and b, um, if, if given the learning rate a and b, decides the momentum factors alpha and beta. And um, by doing extensive uh, numerical experiments on a and b, we identify three regimes. Uh, three typical behaviors, three types of typical behaviors of the loss curve depending on different values of A and B. Firstly, if B is much bigger than A, so that means the memory of the, uh, the first order momentum on the numerator is much shorter than the memory length of the second order momentum term on the denominator. In this case, um, so in general, the, the loss curve is decreasing but there are a lot of big spikes. So we call this regime a spike regime. We see that in general it is decreasing, but the loss is frequently pushed back to some very big level by the large spikes. So in this case, the optimization process is unstable and we usually don't know where to stop because we don't know whether we are on a, uh, on a spike or uh, we are not on a spike. 
And on the other side, if we consider uh, uh, when A and B are in the same order, then there will be no big spikes. Instead, we'll have small oscillations. And although there are small oscillations, the loss curve is in general uh, stable and quite smooth. Uh, I mean, generally, if we don't consider those very high frequency uh, oscillations and small loss can be achieved finally. We call this the oscillation regime. Finally, on the other side, if A is bigger than B, which means the memory of the uh, second order momentum is shorter than the memory of the first order momentum, in this case, the loss curve is unstable. And usually, uh, in many cases, the loss, uh, the, the iterator will diverge, as uh, shown by the figure here on the right. You can see that after some iterations, the loss uh, becomes quite big, it diverges. So we call this a divergence regime. And the following two heat maps shows the distribution of the uh, three regimes on the diag uh, diagram of A and B. Here, the x-axis denotes the, the value of A, and the y-axis denotes the value of B. And on the left side, we show the uh, final loss of the training. We see that when A is uh, bigger than B, here uh, on this wide region, the final loss is very big. So this is the divergence regime. And when B is bigger than A, uh, on the above part, uh, the loss is somewhere small, somewhere big, but it's not, it is not smooth. It, it is unstable. The variance is quite big. And when A and B are approximately in the same order, the loss is small, and also it changes smoothly as A and B changes. So according to this loss uh, heat map, we give the following uh, classification of the three regimes. And we show that the spike regime happens when B is bigger than A, and especially when B is quite big. And the divergence regime happens when A is bigger than B, and when they are similarly big. And also A and B are both small, uh, we are in the oscillation regime. So this heat map will guide us to choose a proper uh, combination of hyperparameters for a dam to uh, converge fast and smoothly. Okay, as a summary in this work, we study the quantitative behaviors of ADAM and MSPROP uh, to typical adaptive gradient algorithms. And then uh, we identify the three typical features uh, in the loss curve of these algorithms. These features are fast initial convergence, small oscillations, and large spikes. And finally, we study uh, we studied the influence of hyperparameters for the behavior of ADAM. We get three behavior patterns uh, for ADAM depending on the relation between the two hyperparameters, A and B. It's, uh, that also means alpha and beta. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, we show by observation that small and stable loss curve can be achieved in the oscillation regime where A and B are in the same order. Okay, that's uh, mainly about uh, our work. And uh, thank you for uh, your listening and we welcome any questions about this work.